Our home, which is the third of eight planets in our solar system, and the only known place in the universe to support life. Earth is one big spinning mystery in a constant state of change, with more than 4.5 billion years of history locked inside its ball of molten rock and iron. Our planet is made up of a vast array of geological wonders, carved by the oceans, shaped by the shifting planes beneath our feet, and sculpted by the elements across the surface. Here are a few interesting facts that you just might not know. Earth is the third planet from the sun and the only world known to support an atmosphere with free oxygen. Oceans of liquid water on the surface and of course life. Earth is one of the four terrestrial planets like Mercury, Venus, Mars. They all have similar rocky surfaces. Earth is not a perfect sphere. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, as Earth spins, gravity points towards the centre of our planet. Uh, for explanation's sake, uh, the Earth is a perfect sphere and a centrifugal force pushes outward. But since this gravity opposing force acts as a perpendicular sort of thing to the axis of Earth, and Earth's axis is sort of tilted, centrifugal force at the equator is not exactly opposed to gravity. Gravity pushes extra masses of water and Earth into a bulge or spare tyre around our planet. At the equator, the circumference of the globe is around nearly 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometres. According to uh, space.com, that is. And they even throw in a bonus fact. Uh, at the equator, you would actually weigh less than if standing at one of the poles. So, uh, yeah. You may feel like you're standing still, but you're constantly moving fast. Depending on where you are on the globe, you could be spinning with the planet at just over a thousand miles an hour. People on the equator move the fastest, while someone standing on the North or South Pole would be perfectly still. Uh, for example, uh, imagine a basketball spinning on your finger. Uh, a random point on the ball's equator has further to go in a single spin as the point near your finger. So the point on the equator is moving faster. The Earth isn't just spinning. It's also moving around the sun at a whopping 67,000 miles per hour, according to the Physical Society Research and Studies. Researchers calculate the age of the Earth by dating both the oldest rocks on the planet and meteorites that have been discovered on Earth. You see, meteorites and Earth formed at the same time when the solar system was forming and their findings were Earth is about four and a half billion years old. And this is according to the National Centre for Science Education. Did you know the ground you're walking on is recycled? Earth's rock cycle transforms igneous rocks to sedimentary rocks, then to metamorphic rocks, and then it goes back again. This cycle it isn't a perfect circle, but the basics works like this. Magma from deep inside the Earth emerges and hardens into rock. That's the igneous part. Technite processes uplift that rock to the surface, where erosion shaves bits off. These tiny fragments get uh, deposited and buried, and the pressure from above compacts them into sedimentary rocks, such as sandstone. And if sedimentary rocks get buried even deeper, they cook into metamorphic rocks under a lot of pressure and heat. Along the way, of course, uh, sedimentary rocks can be uh, re eroded, excuse me, or metamorphic rocks re uplifted. But if metamorphic rocks uh, get caught in a subduction zone where one piece of the crust is pushing under another, uh, they might find themselves transformed uh, back into magma. 
Earth's moon looks rather dead and inactive, but in fact, moonquakes or earthquakes on the moon keep things a bit shaken up. Quakes on the moon are less common and less intense as those that shake Earth. The total seismic energy released by the moon is about 80 times less than that released by Earth. Well, that's according to the Encyclopedia of Physical Science and Technology. Also, according to the Journal of uh, Geophysical Research, moonquakes seem to be uh, related to tidal stressness associated with the varying distance between the Earth and the moon. Moonquakes also tend to occur at great depths, about midway between the lunar surface and its centre. The fiery award for Earth's hottest spot goes to El Azazia, Libya, where temperature records from weather stations reveal it hits 136 degrees Fahrenheit or 57.8 degrees Celsius. And this was on September the 13th, 1922. Well, according to a NASA Earth Observatory, there have likely been hotter locations, but beyond the network of weather stations. It may come as no surprise that the coldest place on Earth could be found in Antarctica. But the chill factor is somewhat unbelievable. Winter temperatures there can drop below minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 73 degrees Celsius. The lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth came from uh, Russia's Vostok station. (laughs) I do apologise for that. Uh, Where... (laughs) where records show the air plunged to a bone chill in minus 128 degrees Fahrenheit. And this was on July the 21st, 1983, according to the World Meteorological Organization, or WMO. Spilankas Ahoy, the largest confirmed snaglamite in the world, can be found in Cuba, in the Cuvo San Martin Ibino according to the journal Acta Carcelogica, if that's pronounced correctly, this behemoth rises 220 feet or 67 meters tall. Shown here a photo of a staglomite in the northwest Yucantan Peninsula cave. Earth has a magnetic field because of the ocean of hot liquid metal that sloshes around its solid iron core, or that's what geophysicists are pretty certain is the cause. This flow of liquid creates electric currents, which in, uh, which in turn generate the magnetic field. Since the early 19th century, Earth's magnetic North Pole has been creeping northward by more than 600 miles, well, according to NASA scientists. The rate of movement has increased with the pole migrating northward at about 40 miles per year compared with the 10 miles per year estimated in the 20th century. Over the past 20 million years, our planet has settled into a pattern of a pole reversal about every 200 to 300,000 years, according to the Journal of Nature. As of 2012, however, it has been more than twice that long since the last reversal. These reversals aren't split-second flips and instead occur over hundreds or thousands of years. During this lengthy drag, the magnetic poles start to wander away from the region around the spin poles, the axis around which our planet spins, and eventually end up switched around, according to the Cornell University astronomers. Earth may once have had two moons, according to space.com, a teensy-weensy second moon spanning about 750 miles wide may have orbited Earth before it catastrophically slammed into the other one. This titanic clash may explain why the two sides of the surviving lunar satellite are so different from each other. This is what scientists said uh, on August the 4th, 2011, in an issue of the the Journal of Nature. Some scientists claim Earth still has two moons. According to researchers reporting uh, on December the 20th, 2011, 
in an issue of the Planetary Science Journal, a space rock at least uh, one metre wide orbits Earth at any given time. Uh, they're not always the same rock, but rather an ever-changing cast of temporary moons, as the scientists put it. Their theoretical model posits that our planet's gravitary captures asteroids as they pass near us on their way round the sun. When one of these space rocks gets drawn in, it typically makes three irregular sh- uh, shaped swings around Earth. And it, and it stays with us for about nine, ten months before hurling on its, on its way. Did you know rocks can walk on Earth? Or at least they do at the pancake flat lake bed called Racetrack Playa uh, in Death Valley, this is. And there, a perfect storm can move rocks, sometimes weighing tens or hundreds of pounds. Most likely, ice-encrusted rocks get inundated by meltwater from the hills above the Playa. Well, this is according to NASA researchers. Um, when everything's nice and calm, a stiff breeze can kick up and move these rocks about. To find the world's longest mountain range, you'd have to look down, way down. It's called the, mid, uh, the Mid-Ocean the mid Ridge, and the underwater chain of volcanoes spans some 40,000 miles, according to the NOAA. It rises an average of 18,000 feet above the bottom of the sea. As lava erupts from the sea floor, it creates more crust, adding to the mountain chain which stretches around the globe. Coral reefs support the most species per unit area of any of the planet's ecosystems, rivaling in the rainforests. And while they're made up of tiny coral polyps, I hope that's pronounced right. Together, coral reefs are the largest living structures on Earth. A community of connected organisms, with some visible even from space, according to the NOAA. How low can you go, eh? Well, according to the NOAA, the deepest point on the ocean floor is uh, 36,200 feet or 11,000 metres below sea level in the Mar- uh, Mariana Trench. The lowest point on Earth not covered by ocean is 8,000 feet, or 2,500 metres below sea level. Uh, but good luck waiting there, eh? That spot is in the Bentley uh, subglacial trench in Antarctica, which is buried under lots and lots of ice. The lowest point on land, however is relatively accessible. It's the Dead Sea between Jordan, Israel and the West Bank. According to the European uh, Space Agency, or ESA, the surface of this super salty lake is 1,400 feet or 427 metres below sea level. Did you know in Cameroon and on the border of Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, There are three deadly lakes, uh, forgive me if I pronounce these wrong, Uh, Neos, Manun, and Kivu. All three are crater lakes that sit above the volcanic earth. Magma below the surface releases carbon dioxide into the lakes, resulting in a deep carbon dioxide rich layer right above the lake bed. And that carbon dioxide can be released uh, in an explosion, asphyxiating any passerby. Uh, I just want to say a quick thank you for joining me at the pond for this small factual insight on our home planet, Earth. I mean, there are so many, many you know, wonderful facts about our planet, and I couldn't squeeze them all into this video because it, it would have been super duper long and. I was afraid it'd be too long, so uh, I hope you enjoyed, and if you do, uh, let us know, and uh, we could do a a load more facts. Thank you very much. Uh, Take care. Bye-bye.